I finally have the confidence to share my experience after two months of viewing your channel. For anonymity, I must give a brief background on my life to properly comprehend. You can call me Peter. My dad raised me after my mother died giving birth. In contrast to other NDs, my dad was a good parent and worked hard to provide. I regularly stayed at my grandparents' house while he worked. My grandmother made me attend church twice a week, therefore I'm religious. I wasn't convinced the Bible was true, but I wouldn't tell her. After 24 years, I was living in California, waiting tables and doing various things to become an actress until I was discovered. My life changed forever on a routine night at the restaurant I worked at when a noisy bunch started cursing and acting like they had never been in public. My manager and I informed them of their departure. They talked before my manager stated he'd contact the cops. After hearing that, they left but threatened us again. I thought it was over. Was wrong. After closing, I walked to my car and felt strangely watched. Right before I got in my car, something whacked me in the head. I later learned it was a bat, and the individual swinging it was the loudest of the group we had asked to leave. Not sure if I went unconscious for a few seconds. He was swinging the bat again when I looked up from the ground. In the fetal position, I screamed for aid as he swung repeatedly until I lost consciousness. I suddenly find myself in a large white room. I noticed no doors, windows, walls, or ceiling-defining features. I called hello. Don't ask why. Imagine I was dead. I thought an angel, Jesus, a deceased relative, or someone would help me get to the hereafter. But it didn't happen, so I waited a long time. Finally, I remembered what my grandma often taught me as a child. She advised, if you ever find yourself in a situation you can't get out of, just pray to Jesus and he will save you. I did. I kneeled, closed my eyes, and prayed like never before. I don't know how long I prayed, but a calm voice told me to stand. Jesus was standing in front of me when I opened my eyes. His black hair suggested Middle Eastern ancestry. His plain white robe with a brown belt around the waist. I wanted to ask him many things, but the first one was, is this heaven? Jesus replied with a smile that could light up the cosmos, and I realized his lips didn't move. I only heard his words in my brain. Jesus said, you are only here temporarily, and someone wants to meet you. My thoughts raced. I stood with Jesus. Who else can I meet? In an instant, a woman stood next to Jesus, and I knew I should know her. Then I realized she was my mother. My father showed me her picture often as a child. I felt at home since Jesus and her were so loving. I called mom. She came forward and hugged me almost electrically. I was flooded with affection from her instead of being shocked. When she spoke, it was like Jesus. I heard the words in my thoughts despite her lips not moving. She advised me to quit blaming myself for her death, that she was pleased as we would soon be together forever. My life on earth was not over, thus I would shortly leave. I begged Jesus to let me stay. I don't want to go back. Jesus reminded me that my journey was decided, just like a river's course to the ocean. He smiled again and informed me I had something vital to do in this life that would make earthly pains worth it. Then Jesus touched my head, and I saw several visions. I felt like I was viewing my future in a movie. When Jesus left, I questioned, Is that my future? He said, That is one possible future of yours. You still have free will, and there will be several times when you have a choice to alter the path, but that one is the most likely based on your choices so far. Will I remember that if I go back, I wonder? You may find times when you feel as if you know what is going to happen next, but no, you won't remember the details. Part of me wanted to stay with Jesus and my mother, but I also needed to return to my body and finish things down here. Though not a mission, it felt like a responsibility to myself, my parents, or someone else. No idea. Did I choose to return? Perhaps one was offered, but I felt compelled to return. I wish I knew why. My mother held me again with that electrifying love, said we would meet soon, and then gone. Jesus held me in his pure love and told me he loved me. Then I woke up in the hospital. After hearing my screams for aid, my restaurant manager hurried to my rescue. He was also wounded in the shoulder by the bat before grabbing it from my attacker, who fled.
Next, the doctor told me I had a concussion and numerous broken ribs and would stay overnight for monitoring, but be released the next day if everything went well. I felt a ringing in my ears after I got out of the hospital, but I didn't complain for fear of the doctor forcing me stay longer. This lasted weeks, so I did what I did in the vast white room when I encountered Jesus. I kneeled again and prayed. Next morning, the ringing stopped. My future is unknown, but something about it drew me back. Previously, I didn't believe in the Bible. I believe in God and Jesus Christ. I'm excited to cross over. My experience may comfort someone. Sincerely, Peter. While doing housework on April 3, 2008, I felt a sharp discomfort in my abdomen, like something was burrowing in my stomach. I could barely stand the increasing ache. Finally, I fainted. I woke up in the hospital with my hubby by my bed. Doctors diagnosed acute appendicitis as my critical disease. According to the expert, the appendix is a little tube-like organ at its end. Infection or blockage can cause inflammation and pain. If untreated, the appendix can rupture, causing serious or fatal complications. My doctor recommended excision surgery for appendicitis. I worried about the surgery's hazards, but the doctor assured me it was regular and safe. I decided to get surgery after much thought. That afternoon, I had successful surgery. A minor abdominal incision allowed the doctor to remove the appendix endoscopically. My appendix was removed, and the doctor informed me everything went fine. The procedure went well, but I needed to stay in the hospital to recover. The doctor noticed my wound was infected, requiring a second surgery. Staph bacteria were identified in contaminated fluid. My second surgery started. I was anesthetized, but I could hear sounds after a while. I saw the doctor groan as they discussed my two-year-old daughter, whom I may never see again. They discussed my family, father, and husband. This is how they talk about me and my family. Why? I'm alive. They should speak differently. Don't they realize I can hear them? I was bewildered and upset. My situation was bad. Staph bacteria infiltrated most of my body, making elimination difficult. During my initial operation, no one knew what caused my infection. Doctors utilized sterilized tools. I woke up in ICU. I woke up to my relatives gathered around me, sad expressions. My throat was tubed with oxygen, so I couldn't talk. My mood is fine, I wanted to assure them. I gestured triumphantly when the doctor inquired how I was feeling. The doctor left to talk to my parents, I heard them talking. Mother inquired, what does she have, doctor? What should we do now? Dear doctor, the staff has just started to spread, but it is very dangerous, my husband asked. How serious is it? The doctor said, very serious. She may now have brain damage. We are considering some kind of antibiotic to treat the bacteria in her body. We have two options. To give her antibiotics, but there are also risks associated with this approach. If we drop the treatment, you will lose her in a few days. My parents and spouse went home dejected since the hospital had no extra beds. My throat hurt, and I wanted to notify the nurse next to me, but I couldn't talk. I requested a pen and paper from the nurse. I told the nurse my throat hurts. My nurse stroked my head and stated, It's normal to be a little uncomfortable, but she can't take the tube off. My life-defining moment occurred two hours later. One nurse informed another that she would pick up her daughter from school. The second nurse told me she was leaving to get water. As sputum formed after the nurses left, my breathing became harder. Blocking the tube prevented oxygen from reaching my lungs. There was no way to shout. I was helpless as my body squirmed. A few seconds felt like hours. A large number of physicians and nurses entered my room as the alarm rang. I heard their frantic screams. They requested an expert team. Looked like madmen shouting. I could hear everything yet not breathe. The doctor tried to suction that FL with fluid in a tube. My heart stopped beating and respiration halted. I departed my body. I opened my eyes again and saw myself floating in my hospital gown. My pain was gone and I felt comfortable. I saw my body surrounded by doctors. I felt a strange power drop from above. It was getting closer and seemed to be taking me out of this planet. I was terrified and unsure what to do. I refused since I didn't want to leave my family or body. It was my fear that this power would take me forever. But the power was too much. My fight was meaningless.
I gave up and decided to leave this world. I was finally taken by this power. I started a beautiful journey. A large tree's top was hidden. The tree sparkled. Many little creatures were peacefully circling the tree. It was peaceful and filled with a love I had never felt before. Voices entered my soul. As I rose, my body relaxed. This calmness was internal and external. I saw more wildlife. I had never seen so many wild animals at once. They looked different from earth animals and had distinct colors. They were all cordial, like we knew each other. I kept walking. Many kids were there. They had diverse skin colors and origins. Each one was gorgeous and unique. Every child was cheerful and smiling. They ran and played in the fields. I noticed a lovely garden where they were running. Central to the area was a massive fountain. I passed numerous people on my way to the garden. These were teens and middle-aged folks. I saw joy and harmony. People were smiling and love was strong. Flowers of many colors surrounded the fountain. People spoke and smiled while seated. It was like talking to their consciousness. Books were read in the garden. Not once did I feel uncomfortable or hurt here. Suddenly, I pictured my parents and hubby. I knew they were hurting. When I assumed they would arrive later, I stopped fretting. As I went, I saw a large group of elderly individuals. All the seniors smiled and looked enthusiastic. They were walking in a flower garden by a beautiful river. A distant light appeared suddenly. Is this my final destination? The closer I got, the stronger my love. I felt like the light was calling me to my last destination. Slowly approaching the light, I felt its warmth and tranquility. I felt engulfed in it. I felt pure love and peace for the first time from the light. My soul seemed lighter and freer. I was overjoyed in this gorgeous place. I thank the mystery force that brought me here and gave me this beautiful feeling. A hand touched my head. Love flooded me at this time. The soothing voice said, Stay calm. You can't stay here yet. I wanted to ask many things, but I started my trek home. Am I only going back in this rough way? It was so gorgeous. I saw medics resuscitating me in a hospital bed. I felt love and calm like never before because I knew this strange energy was still with me. I didn't want to return to my body yet. The voice returned with greater clarity and force. He said, I have too much to do. Too many people need me. I knew I couldn't leave my duty unfinished. After the mystery force returned me to my body, I opened my eyes to a sharp ache. Many physicians surrounded me. My chest was hot. I asked now. I shouted, No, I don't want to go back, but nobody heard me. Do of my want to leave, I was frantic. Slowly, I fell asleep. I felt like no one cared about me. Everyone wanted to take me back to suffering. My heart stopped pounding while I was away. My doctor persisted. I got my heartbeat back after a while. A doctor stayed with me overnight. I was initially disoriented. I blamed the doctor for returning me. I eventually came to my senses after hours. Then I slowly accepted what had transpired. I shared my story with the doctor. After hearing my account, the doctor was quiet. He then recounted near-death experiences. Many people have similar experiences, he said. He suggested that my strong faith could be this hidden energy. I denied religious views when he asked. I wondered if faith could help me grasp this. The doctor said faith can help people overcome death and adversity. I calmed after hearing the doctor's comments. My emotions were mixed when I went home. I appreciated returning home to see my spouse and family. However, I was bewildered since I couldn't interpret the scenes. My husband didn't trust me about the light and power I saw and felt. He hugged me and said, Honey, it was probably just a hallucination you had during the surgery. Don't worry too much about it. I understood him. Indeed, it was an odd and incomprehensible experience. On my bed, I relived that encounter. I remembered the voice telling me I had a lot to do and that many people needed me. I contemplated that voice's meaning and purpose to seek insight. My husband didn't believe me, but I didn't disbelieve the experience. I knew my encounter was real, not a delusion or medicine side effect. I'm sure this will change my life for years. I appreciate life and the chance to achieve something meaningful. I should appreciate this chance and live meaningfully.